Hello guys, welcome back to Not Just Make, it's Marco here and today we talk about speed painting. My name is Barry Allen and I am the fastest man alive. Speed is not an essential part of enjoying the hobby, but is a skill useful to master to bring more painted models on the battlefield, or if you are a painter, always fighting against a pile of backlog. Just an example. For an effective speed painting, mindset and preparation is more important than any other actual skill, so you need to follow three simple rules. First rule, use references, and this is true for every kind of paint job. Artworks, comics, movie shots, all is good, but never, never use another miniature as a reference. The result will be always a lesser version of a toy, so aim to something better and the result will be better. 2. With the plan in mind, prepare your table to follow the plan. You don't want to find yourself without thinner in the middle of the work. Also, having all your tools and paints on the table helps you to understand what you need to do and cut all the extra non-essential steps. And 3. Really important don't paint all the parts of your model in the same way. Especially when speed painting, you have to put extra care painting the main focuses of the model, in this case, skins and bones. It's always better to cut some quality and time from the boots of the miniature and invest that extra quality and time in painting a better face. Here is my war band, nine models, plus I made myself another first fang with bits I had around, because basically I'm a power player. They are all cleaned, based, and I'm ready to start with the clock. Remember always to base your models before painting, because everything will be more solid, better integrated together, and you don't need to mess with glue and powders around a painted model. As usual, I prime everything with monotone black. It's super fluid and can go in airbrush pure without any dilution. This way I can spray quickly without losing any details, and since the paint is originally made for murals and street art, I have a super solid first layer for my paint jobs. Time for a navy zenithal coat of white. I use a pure titanium white ink because it's easier to spray, avoiding the little white dots that usually white paint produces when used in the airbrush. Don't be shy with white, in this step I'm creating the first modulation of lights and shadows, and I need to keep my light values really high, to have the space to work later with inks in the midtones and shadows. So I spray from above, keeping an angle of 40-60 degrees with the model. For gaming models, I always like to come back again on the faces, reinforcing even more the white. We look at this kind of models uh, from a certain distance, so it's always useful to reinforce a bit more the main focal point of the miniature. Time for the serious business. I want three different skin tones in my warband, so I've already divided my models under my three basic tones. I'll use Daleroni Flesh Tint, Liquitex Raw Sienna for a yellowish tone, and Red Earth for my dark skins. The plan for now on is to work with transparencies, taking advantage of the black and white underpainting, and quickly glazing with the airbrush transparent layers of paints. For this reason, even my base tones are very diluted, with about 50% of airbrush thinner. This time I spray the whole model 360 degrees, but trying to avoid eating directly the highest parts. I want to build a solid mid-tone and a base for my shadows, leaving the inevitable overspray to tint the highest parts. The idea is to build later the shadows, having all the highlights already done, saving a lot of time. Same concept with the raw sienna. I keep the dilution around 50%, maybe even a little more, since darker inks tend to have more covering power. Again, my main target is the center of the body followed by the shadow areas that are already very dark thanks to the zenithal priming, and the overspray will do the rest on the upper parts. 
And here you can see the two basic skin tones together. Same process with the red earth, increasing the dilution to 70% to compensate for the opacity of the darker tone. This step doesn't require a lot of control, so I can work really, really fast. The real work here is made by the black and white underpainting, so basically it's already done. You need only to keep under control the effect of the overlapping layers of paint, trying to create the main tone you want for the skin in the mid-tones. Highlights will appear by themselves and uh, will create the shadows in the next step. And here I am with my three skin tones. Obviously you can be even faster, painting everything with the same color and limiting the loads and loads of the airbrush, but uh, with a couple of extra steps the quality of the finished warband will be greatly increased. On the Lion I use the three main tones, all together, to tie it with the rest of the warband. Time to build the shadows and increase the contrast of my skins. For the job I use Liquitex Deep Violet, heavily diluted with 80% of thinner. And I do this because it has a crazy covering power, so I need to play safe. And I use it on all my models. I want a warm tone in the shadows, and the violet will react in interesting ways with the three basic skin tones. Thanks to the transparency of the mix, every paint will be affected by the violet in different ways, increasing exponentially the variety of tones. I spray the violet from below, trying to aim perpendicularly to the details, and all the muscles I want to catch. The main trick for a good airbrushing is to constantly move both the model and the airbrush to find the most effective angle to spray with. The hair flow can move only in a straight line, so it's up to you to compensate for this kind of limitation. Basically, here I'm glazing in a fast way using the airbrush. I don't want a thick solid coat of violet, but with a couple of transparent layers in the right spots, I create a gentle modulation, different tones and a lot of contrast. And here is the result of my shading. My skins are basically done and I'm still under one hour of work. Using just two colors for each kind of skin, on top of a black and white underpainting you can create this kind of interesting and deep tones, with strong lights and shadows and a lot of contrast. This is a speed painting, but just imagine what you can still do investing some extra time and effort on these skins. I like in particular the effect of the raw sienna, where the violet combined with the yellowish tone. Here I give a quick coat of satin varnish to my skins. I want to make them look a bit shiny and sweaty, like bodybuilders, to create even more contrast with the matte dry finish I want for the bones. So, the reason for this varnish here is purely aesthetic. The other main part of these models is definitely made by bones. A lot of bones. I want to create a warm, deep, dark tone for them, so I decided to give a quick coat of uh, Molotov Sahara Beige to everything. I use the airbrush to speed up the process, and I finish with the brush in the spots uh, too difficult to reach precisely with the spray. This will consume a bit of time of my limited reserve, but the effect will be definitely richer. Now that I have a solid base tone, I'm going to wash everything with contrast skeleton horn. You can do almost the same with the Agrax, but I like the matte finish of this color and is not too dark, so my values stay almost the same, still darkening the recesses and all the details, and this is good to save time in the next steps. And this is the result, nicely matte, warm and deep. But don't worry, this is just the beginning. Again, all the bones are my second main focus with the skins, so they deserve a couple of more steps. I consider these my mid-tones, so 
I'm going to apply a light with my original Molotov beige aiming from above and a shadow with transparent raw amber aiming from below. Spraying my highlights, I'm not afraid of covering the details. Here I'm looking for volumes and tones. Only later I'll work on definition and all the details. Even with all my planning, I decided at the last moment to add a bit of sap green inside the burnt amber to give a greenish sensation to the bones. This will help to increase the contrast between the warm skins and the bone parts. Here you can see an interesting trick for precise airbrushing. While painting the external teeth and details, I'm not aiming directly to them, but uh, using my finger to keep track of my position, I aim outside the model and let the outer overspray to catch the details I want. This way I can be more gentle and more in control with the application. Then I use carbon black, black ink, but you can use also contrast black templar for this, to shade the external areas of teeth and bones. Again I use my finger as target, aiming outside the detail I need to paint. The small amount of color that reaches the miniature is all I need. You need just a bit of practice, but mastering this trick will increase the precision of your airbrushing to crazy levels. And here is the result after two hours of work. I have all my focal points ready, with a variety of interesting tones and nice contrasts. There is still a lot to do, but as I said at the beginning, the extra care given to these parts will focus all the attention of the viewers, so everything left to paint will be done uh, in a super super quickly and easy way. And to prove that now everything will move at a crazy speed, here is a bunch of grey and brown contrast paints that I used to paint all the fur in a row. So I have all the pots open on the desk and I'll uh, pick the tone I need uh, straight from the bottle without even cleaning the brush between a pot and another, because uh, the tones will merge together wet on wet, uh, adding even more interest and depth to the fur. I use flash tears red for all the handles on the weapons. This will unify a bit the whole warband, and this is really important to compensate for all the different tones I have uh, on the models. 
Then a simple coat of Black Templar on the bandages. Followed by Gorgruntafur for all the stripes of light leather of the equipment. Then I used my beloved Vallejo Metal Color Dura Aluminium straight for the bottle for the few metal parts we have on these miniatures. Followed by Agrax to kill a bit uh, the shine of this kind of metal paint, adding the sensation of reddish brownish rust and shading all the metal parts. Then a quick coat of contrast wildwood for the dark leather of the clothes. I use the transparency of contrast to create a warm bronze on top of my silver. I usually use a warm brown ink for this kind of job, like red oxide or burnt sienna, but uh, also contrasts are really good for this kind of job. Now I need only to paint the two capes of the heroes. I waited till the end because even if I knew precisely what I wanted in terms of tones and style, I prefer to see how the other elements work together and then maybe adjust the plan. I want a strong reddish orange, something like a sunset in the savanna, really poetic. So I start with pure Liquitex yellow haso, to give a solid base and a solid code for my red. Reds are really influenced by the hunter paint and this warm yellow is perfect to move them to the orange spectrum. Then a single coat of pure Daleroni Crimson will do the main job. As for everything else, I let uh, the underpainting to set the modulation of uh, lights and shadows. I just uh, increase a bit the shadows, insisting with red using a couple of extra layers to increase uh, the contrast. The color of the bases is the only custom mix I made for the whole war band because I needed to go fast. I'm not lazy. And uh, for all the details about this kind of bases, just follow the link uh, if I remember to put it to my previous video about uh, indestructible gaming bases. Since I'm perfectly following my timeline, I have the time to give a simple and quick dry brush to the leather details. I use an old brush with a few ruined bristles to give a mix of stippling and dry brush to this part and suggest the idea of old leather, dry leather, full of little cuts and wrinkles with basically no effort. Some tribal war paints here and there, and here is our warband in all its glory. Four hours and something of work to reach this point, and in general this could be a result good enough to play with. We have a lot of different interesting tones, lights and shadows work well, and the general contrast are all there. The only thing I need is a bit more definition. You can create it in a lot of different ways, but as you can imagine, here my plan is to use oil washes. Using oils, I can fill all the little precise lines in seconds, without damaging anything of my previous work. I can modulate the application and cleaning to boost only what I need. I'll mix a simple palette of 50% black and burnt amber, 50% black and magenta, and pure black. I want these to be light and gentle washes, so I add white spirit until I reach a watery consistency similar to a GW acrylic wash. I apply freely the magenta mix on my lighter skins, the brown mix on the yellow skins, and pure black on my dark skins. Then I cover all the rest, choosing the best color for every spot. On the Lion I use a bit of everything.
time to clean for the sake of speed also the cleaning part is really simplified especially thanks to the small amount of oil i applied this will be a two-step process first i clean everything with q-tips without using white spirit just a dry q-tip rubbed gently on the surface to take away the excess of paint this way i leave a generous amount of color in all the recesses adding a strong definition to all the details and uh, working without white spirit i don't risk uh, to erase something by mistake so i can work super fast uh, and super safe Only in the second step I introduce white spirit and I'm going to clean only the upper parts and the most raised details. This way I'm not only adding definition refining the first step but uh, I'm obtaining brighter highlights and darker shadows increasing the general contrast. As always, you can go back and forward as you need. Here on the boss's cape, I wanted a bit more dripping grime, so I needed only to add uh, a bit of uh, extra oil paint. So, here we are after 5, almost 6 hours of work. I know I lost the 5 hour challenge, but uh, with all the extra time needed for uh, recording, it's still a very good result. But dinner is still not here, so I have time for another little step. With these colors I'm going to give a quick hedge highlight to various details. I know, this should be a quick speed paint for gaming, but at this point I really can't resist. At this point I don't even bother to set my wet palette, but I'm going to use them uh, pure from the bottle on a piece of grease proof paper.
and since after six hours I can't really stop anymore this is the only life I know now I'll show you a final trick to add some extra interest to the cape because it's impossible that this guy has a nice clean cape in the middle of the desolation of chaos prepare a light, fairly diluted color load a big brush and with the airbrush push some random splatters of paint on the cape Guys, I really hope you enjoyed this ride. It's a condensation of several hours of work, but all you need to know to do exactly the same, it's here. And if you have any other curiosity, just leave a comment below and I'll answer as soon as I can. If you like this video, give it a like and subscribe. Remember that you can always ask me anything down below with a comment and uh, you can follow my projects during the week uh, using uh, one of my socials. So, see you next week, guys.